Hi, my name is Jenny Fenderberg. Welcome to this workshop. It is part one of Volunteer Personalities. This is going to be a fun workshop. Both of these are, so make sure you check out both parts of it. What we're going to do is we're going to identify eight personalities that exist in volunteers in children's ministry and really in the church in general. After we identify them, we're also going to look at cautions that we need to have as we lead these people. And the final thing is we're going to identify some strategies for how to lead each of these personalities. We're going to have some fun with this, and I look forward to diving into it with you. Let's pray before we get started. Thank you, Lord, that you give us the chance to lead. Thank you that you make all of us different. You make every person unique. Help us become better leaders as we learn more about the people that you've created. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Let's begin by prefacing our whole conversation with this. Um, 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one a part of it. And what that verse reminds us, as we look at these eight different personalities, since we have a little fun with some of them, and as we look at some harsh realities of some of them, let's remember that God has created every single person uniquely, but as a part of his body. There is a part for every one of us to play, no matter what our personality may be like. And that's so important to remember, especially with the volunteers that you're ready to kill or vote off the island, is that God has a place for every person within our body, within the body of Christ. It's our job to help them find it. With that being said, let's dive in and look at personality number one. Our first one that we're going to be looking at today is the needy volunteer. So let's look at some characteristics of the needy volunteer. First of all, this volunteer may call or email you about 15 to 20 times during the week. Do you have anybody like this? Um, it may be that they want to talk. It may be that they forgot to tell you something. They may need to call and tell you they're going to be out and tell you the 900 reasons why. Um, but you hear a lot from this person. Usually this needy volunteer has difficulty um, solving problems for themselves. Do you have a volunteer that on Sunday morning comes up to you frantically because they have unsharpened pencils? Um, maybe they can't find the crayons? They just cannot seem to be able to solve those kind of problems and look to you to solve them. These kind of volunteers need constant reassurance, constant um, affirmation of what they're doing. They constantly look for you and look for that kind of attention. Needy volunteers can take a lot of our time and a lot of our energy. Let's look at the cautions that go along with it. First, they can monopolize your time. Um, if they're calling all the time, if they're emailing all the time, if they have lots of words for you on a Sunday morning, these volunteers can take up a whole bunch of your time. So you need to be cautious of that and guard against that. Love them, um, take care of them, try to meet their needs as much as you can, but you can't let them take over your whole world. Um, second, it can be very, very frustrating. It can be frustrating when someone is needy and is kind of clingy to you. Um, when someone can't solve their own problems, that can be very frustrating, especially depending on what your personality is. On the flip side of that, some leaders really like these, need, these needy kind of volunteers. What I mean by that is you enjoy the attention or maybe you enjoy the feeling of being needed. And sometimes this can create an unhealthy dependence. Um, so let's make sure that we're cautious of that as well. Um, another caution is that these volunteers can get their feelings hurt very, very easily. If their needs aren't met, if they don't get the attention that they're seeking, if um, you don't return their emails, they will be the ones that get offended pretty quickly. So let's look at how do we lead these needy volunteers. First of all, we've got to give this volunteer permission to make decisions for themselves. And you may have to give them permission to do that a lot. You know what, Sally? You're right. There aren't any crayons in your room. You can go find some crayons. Or you can ask our resource coordinator for the crayons. You know what? Here's a pencil sharpener. Here's where the pencil sharpener lives. You are welcome to go sharpen your own pencils anytime. Those are kind of trivial examples. But you can give them permission to make bigger decisions too. Just help them feel ownership for um, the volunteer role that they have. Second, um, this is especially important if you're the type of person that becomes very frustrated by the neediness of a volunteer, is to give this volunteer a friend or a mentor or a buddy who's not you. Um, if you're one that gets highly aggravated by that neediness, 
um, put put a little wall of separation, not in a mean way, but a little buffer between you and that person. Um, have someone else, whether it's a director or another leader in the ministry, that can be that person's first line of contact. And finally, be patient. God is, again, God has created all of us differently. Um, usually there's a reason why somebody has the need for that attention. There's a reason why they don't feel the freedom or they don't feel um, the confidence to be able to take care of needs by themselves. So be patient, love them, and, and find the right places for them to serve. And if needed, find somebody else to be their best friend to save your own sanity. Our second volunteer personality is very, very different from the first. Let's talk about the fun volunteer. The fun volunteer is the life of the party and is all about fun or what appears to be fun to them. Kids love this volunteer and they're a great asset to your ministry because again kids love fun and kids are attracted to fun. You can usually identify this volunteer because he or she is going to have about five or six kids hanging off of them at any given time. They are the life of the party. Um, usually you'll recognize this volunteer because they're usually about 10 minutes late if they remember to show up at all. Again, they're all about the fun, so they're going to drift to where the fun is, which may or may not be um, their area of responsibility. Also, you can't help but love this volunteer. Because they're so much fun, and they're fun to be around, everybody loves them, especially the kids. But let's look at some cautions with the fun volunteer. Number one, sometimes this volunteer is more interested in the fun than necessarily what the job he or she is doing. Um, they may easily get distracted. They may easily um, gear things towards something different from what they're supposed to be doing because, again, they're seeking out the fun. Um, second, they can distract children from the main purpose. Um, I will never in my whole life forget sitting in on a second grade small group. And the, uh, the teacher was working very hard to tell this great story, um, something related to Christmas. And the small group leader began making cow and donkey noises. The kids loved it absolutely hilarious but totally wrecked the whole lesson um, yeah, again kids need fun but these volunteers these high fun volunteers um, often distract from the main purpose the kids totally missed whatever the Bible truth was we were trying to teach at that moment but were highly entertained by the cow noises I guess it needed some sound effects um, you have volunteers who prefer quiet and who prefer serious and who prefer to stay on the point and they are very likely to kill or want to kill the high energy high fun volunteer so you need to be cautious of that how do we lead the fun volunteer first of all we need to give him a role that fits his personality if he is fun and he is all about fun give him a fun role don't give him a role where he has to be there right on time. Um, don't give him a role where he has to be quiet and still and keep all the kids very serious. Give him something that fits who God has made him. Um, second, we need to keep the fun volunteer, we need to hold the fun volunteer accountable, just like we do everybody else. The same expectations have to apply. But we also have to recognize that somebody who has this personality is probably not going to be 100% dependable. They're probably not going to be on time all the time. And they're probably not going to color within the lines that we set. So um, acknowledge that. But also remember that they have to be held accountable. They don't get to go totally off the page just because they are fun. The third thing is help coach this person. Help coach this volunteer to use all that energy and all that fun and all that creativity um, towards your ultimate goals in kids ministry. Some people think in their natural assumption, especially if this is the way they're wired, their natural assumption is that the ultimate goal in children's ministry is for the kids to have fun. And while that's an important goal, I doubt it's probably your number one goal. So help them see what you're trying to do. Help them try to catch the big vision and help them see how their personality, how their fun can play into that and be directed towards that. Um, last, help make sure that you partner this person with the right person. Um, the high energy, high fun person probably doesn't need to be partnered with another high fun person or nothing's ever going to happen in that group. At the same time, if you put them as a highly strict rule follower, um, that's not going to go well either. The perfect match would be someone who's a little bit more calm, a little bit more structured, but who can understand and identify and enjoy that type of personality. Fun volunteers are just that. They're super fun, and you've got to have them in kids' ministry. 
but it's also important that we pay attention to how we leave them. Our third volunteer personality is again very, very different from our fun volunteer. This is the negative volunteer. I'm sure you've run into them at your church. The negative volunteer will always, always, always have something to complain about. It might be the curriculum, it might be the color of the walls, it might be the songs that you sing, it might be the clothes that somebody else is wearing, but they will always find something to complain about. This is going to probably end up being one of my favorite stories of all times, but last week uh, my team threw a surprise party, was throwing a surprise party that I knew a little bit about ahead of time, but it was a surprise party for my 10th anniversary at our church. And beforehand, a mama came and stopped me and asked what time exactly it was starting, and, and I really didn't know. And I tried to explain to her that I didn't plan the party, and I really wasn't going to be able to answer her questions. And then she proceeded to complain about how the children would be eating, be eating ice cream so late at night. And again, I was trying to explain to her, I didn't plan this party. Um, I, this was a surprise party for me, and I just really wasn't in charge. But she really, really needed to complain. And for some reason, there are lots of those people out there in church world are the negative volunteers who always are going to find something to complain about. These are the volunteers that you can send out the very best, most inspirational email or give the very best inspirational talk that you've ever given, and they're going to come back with some kind of irrelevant criticism. I'm afraid that you know the kind too. What's even worse is that these negative volunteers very rarely keep their opinions to themselves. They're going to feel free to share it with you and with anybody else that will listen. Is this resonating with anybody? Do you have anybody like this in your church? Bottom line, negative volunteers are just plain grumpy. I don't know that I have a better word for it. So what are some cautions? These are pretty obvious, but number one, negativity is infectious. And negativity can spread and it can spread quickly. So that's one of the most dangerous parts about this personality is the more people that they share it with, it can become um, infectious throughout the whole organization. Constant negativity will bring your own morale down. Not only is it infectious and can bring down the morale of your team, but it can, be, it can affect you as well. If you have someone who's constantly coming at you with criticism, or you know any time that you say something or do something, this person's going to come back with something that's negative, that can be pretty demoralizing. So that's a caution to watch out for. Um, the truth is, here's the reality about most of us that are in ministry. The reality is that many of us are people pleasers. And the truth is that this type of volunteer is never going to be pleased. And that can be very, very frustrating to those of us in ministry that want to make people happy and are, are focused on that. So how do we lead these negative volunteers? Um, first of all is do not ever, ever, under any circumstance, you can tell I'm a little passionate about this, but don't put a highly negative person in a high level of leadership. We already mentioned that negativity is infectious. And you just don't want that coming from your highest levels of leadership. It's better, and again, I, I guess I am pretty passionate about this, but it's better to have an empty spot than to have a very highly negative leader because you can't get anywhere. Um, that person can't sell passion. That person can't um, be all about the goals of your ministry. What they're focused on is the negativity, and you do not want that at the high, high levels of your ministry. So be very, very cautious of that. Be cautious of the influence that you allow a negative volunteer to have. Um, sometimes, most of the time, if a negative person can have some kind of buy-in before a change is made, it, it, it helps. If you can take some time before you do something new to, to personally inform this person, to talk them through it, to explain the whys, to get their opinions um, before they hear it somewhere else, you, have, you run a chance of having some better buy-in in, in them not being quite as negative. However, they're probably still not going to like the colors of the walls. But taking the time to personally inform them of upcoming changes can be to your benefit. And finally, recognize that there's usually a deeper need. Somebody who is chronically critical of everything has something going on in their world. So look past that. Try to look a little bit deeper. Pray about it. Pray for that person and, and see if there are other ways that you can minister to them. And if there aren't, at least just recognize that there's something much deeper going on 
than the, than the fact that they don't like the colors of the walls. Negative people can be very, very hard to deal with, and you can probably tell it's the personality that I struggle with the most. But again, God created them, God has a place for them, and God has a plan for them. And we have to work wisely, but work with them to try to figure out what that is. The fourth personality that we're going to look at in this, um, this part one of this workshop is the easily distracted volunteer. See if this scenario sounds familiar. Um, you realize that a small group leader or a different whatever kind of volunteer is missing from their service. You can't find them. The kids are hanging out in their spot. They're the grown-ups, not anywhere to be found. So you look and you find them and they're at the coffee pot. And they really have no idea that, they, that it's a bad thing, that they're not where they're supposed to be. Um, they apologize, come back, end up with the group, and then they're gone again. They're, they're all in until all of a sudden a friend from their small group walks by and they jump out of the room to go talk to them. I call this the easily distracted volunteer. And this may or may not sound familiar to you, but I know we've run across quite a few in our ministry. Um, it's very difficult to keep this volunteer in one spot and on task. So what are the cautions with this? Well, the very main concern is that some job is going undone. If a volunteer is jumping around, if a volunteer is not where they're supposed to be, if they're easily distracted and going to get coffee instead of hanging out with the kids, there's ministry that is going undone. Those kids aren't being ministered to. That job is going undone. And that, that can be a pretty big deal. The second thing is that you, know, you kind of have to question the commitment of this volunteer. If they can't stay put, if they don't realize the value of, of what they're doing and why they're doing it, um, you know, you kind of have to question the commitment there. Or it could be that that's just their personality and they really don't see and they really don't know why it's a detriment to the ministry for them to get so easily distracted. They just may really not get it. Um, the third thing is that the sad reality in the lives of our kids is that the adults in their world are very, very distracted. We as parents, I as a parent, um, I'm very bad about being distracted by my phone, by the laptop, by the TV, by the radio, by whatever, except for my children. My kids are used to not, my kids are very used to having very divided attention. And that's their sad reality. That's, that's all of our sad reality. Our kids ministry should be a place where that's not the case. It should be a place where kids get our undivided attention. We only have them for an hour or two hours or whatever your situation may be, but it's not very much time. And our kids need undivided attention from those people who are supposed to be loving on them. So how do we lead this distracted volunteer? First of all, we emphasize and we coach them about how important it is to stay put. Again, they may not realize it. They may not realize why it's a big deal to go to the coffee pot five times during small group. They may not understand why it's bad to, to turn around and start talking to the adult, other adults in the room instead of investing in the children. They really, really don't see it. So spend some time coaching them and helping them see it. You can do this by painting a picture of what might happen. What could happen if you leave those fifth grade boys unattended while you go get coffee? Um, maybe they'll all be in one piece when you get back, or maybe not. It's a big deal and it's a big liability. So help paint the picture of what it would look like if they have their undivided attention and what it looks like and what the dangers could be um, when that volunteer does get distracted and leaves their post. Finally, consider finding this easily distracted volunteer a job that fits their personality. Put their ADD to work. Maybe they need to be um, the security hall monitor, for lack of a better word, or the person that, that wanders and makes sure, makes sure everybody's in the right place. Um, maybe they need to be the role picker upper. Maybe they need to go and visit each class and say hi and, and get their role from the teacher. Maybe they need to be the greeter where they can talk to everybody that, that comes through. You may want to consider if you have them in the very best role and maybe find something else that will fit their personality a little bit better and would be a better fit for your ministry. So in this workshop, we've talked about the needy volunteer, the fun volunteer, the easily distracted volunteer, and the negative volunteer. Those are the four personalities that we've covered. And in the next workshop, in part two, we'll cover four more. But take a minute and look over these, and I want you to think about which of these volunteers are you drawn the most to? I guess in these four that, 
probably the fun one would be the, the most positive. But, but which ones do you work best with? Which ones are the most frustrating to you? Spend some time talking to God about that. You probably had some faces pop in your mind as we were talking about each of these. Ask God to help you see how to lead each of these individuals better. What can you do on your end to help them and to serve them better? Thank you for serving in kids' ministry, and I look forward to talking to you in part two as we look at the next four personalities. Bye-bye.